Okay, we made it to the very last video for this module. Um, now we're going to be talking about the actual project that you're going to be doing now that you've finished this and with the student around post-secondary transition. Once again, I'm taking off my video and we will jump to the PowerPoint. So the big pieces here, I'm sorry, I'm going to move the PowerPoint so that it's big, are um, that for this assignment, you're going to identify a student, um, hopefully a student with a disability, but if you can't find one, then come speak to me and we'll see if um, that, you know what we can do about that. You're going to choose a version of the culture of the responsive student transition presentation, either the functional level, the elementary level, or the secondary. Then you're going to re review resources and student records like their IEP, um, any sort of surveys that they may have already done around transition and that type of thing. And then you're going to provide assessments. Um, so you might do a follow-up interview or surveys or inventories. Um, and that will assist you in the transition planning. Then you're going to work with the student, um, if it's appropriate, uh, in completing the uh, CRSTP. And once again, you can adapt this template in any way. You can add to it, you can subtract it, you can modify it, so maybe change the questions or prompts, you can provide resources, um, but I really need you to report out any changes that you make in the reflection and so you're going to do just kind of a you're going to peruse these documents for this week and then you're going to say you know these are the changes i expect to make and then once you finish this assignment you're going to then write another reflection and say these are all of the things that i actually did um, and then hopefully you'll be able to present this to a family either before an iep meeting um, a special meeting that you have around transition or you may, possibly you have the student create a video um, like with Screencast-O-Matic, which is what I use, and have them record it for their family. Uh, whoops, that wasn't what I meant to do. So let's take a look at these um, three, let me just see, if, there we go, these three versions. So there's the secondary version, and these are all the slides that are in the secondary version. Now remember I mentioned that it follows perfectly aligned with the summary of performance expectations. Um, and then you have the elementary one where we kind of change some of the wording um, and have a few less things to, that they need to do. And then finally the functional one. Now a functional um, presentation, student presentation, could have um, could be done actually by the support people. Um, so it could be the family, you work with the family on answering these questions. Of course you ask the student as well, but you know you might need more involvement from some of the stakeholders. So let me just keep going through. All right, so what are the benefits? Well, this um, these templates are, are known to be user-friendly. They engage and motivate the stakeholders. They allow you to connect and build relationships with the students. They give you insight to the individualized, personalized planning. They're culturally re responsive beyond the boxes, so you're not just checking off that you have worked with the student, but you're, you have actual topics that you're going to talk to them about. Um, it gives students choice and allows them to be critically reflective and then also ownership of the future goals and interests. So here's a slide that it, this one's around self-efficacy. So it says self-efficacy is believing you can accomplish what you set out to do in life. Write a few sentences about how you know you'll be successful. And this student, um, because I'm creative, talented, passionate, and I have a big heart, that's what it says on my Instagram. Um, and then and then she put it on there as well. So it's kind of an opportunity for you to get to know how the students see themselves as well. Um, some of the barriers to this are that um, you start realizing that a lot of the, the assessments that are being used out there, especially around transition, are biased. Um, you know, this also gives you an opportunity to have some cultural conversations. Uh, one of the um, prompts is actually around, you know, what is your culture? economic background, you know, how does your family see education, jobs, living arrangements? That can be a really hard thing to um, talk to students about. They might not want to share. And so, you know, coming up with ways that you can make sure that they see that you're there to support them, not to have a gotcha or anything else um, is, is a really important thing. Also, as I mentioned before, talking about their disability can be really difficult. So, um, you know, treading that conversation lightly, but also not ignoring it because it's difficult. Uh, finding the time 
um, getting students to elaborate. You know, you can see this one is for culture, Hispanic. I live in San Carlos. Education is important. I live with my mom, dad, and brother. You know, so so those are very succinct, and that's a good start. You know, the idea of this is that you could start it in elementary, keep working on it every year, and this can become a fluid document that like follows the student and allows them to really grow and think about these different ideas every year. Um, having enough resources, especially for the next steps. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, I've had students who are like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. And then we come up with a plan on how they can look into that. And then I struggle to get them an internship in a lawyer's office, you know, in a law office. And so it's one of those things where a lot of times we have these wonderful ideas and, um, you know, helping them get to those next steps can be very difficult. Um, collaboration can be hard. You know, you have to trust certain people to follow through with certain things, and that doesn't always happen. Um, and then student supports around preparation uh, and, of course, the anxiety. Uh, one of the questions actually asked about how you'll, for the secondary one, asked about how you'll deal with um, um, uh, stereotypes um, or being treated differently due to your race. Um, your uh, gender and those types of things and that I've or socioeconomic level and you know uh, if you just give that to students they'll be like I've never been treated differently for my race or they'll you know um, I'm a man so I'll never uh, have to deal with with gender issues at work or that type of thing and so really talking about you know that there's always two sides so it's the person who is dealing with that type of abuse at work or at school. And then there's the people who witness that. And so that might be a good conversation starter, but really kind of coming up with ways that you can do that. And then of course, building relationships. So, all right, let's, oops, we'll get to the what's next next. <laughs> uh, but let's go through here. And whoops, there's, there's a syllabus. And we're going to go through and I'm going to show you the example. So you can see here I've got the elementary, the functional, and the secondary. So I'm going to go through the secondary um, first because that's the one that uh, is useful for you to use. And so you can see um, you can see that they've got prompts on the bottom in the comments section and then you also have these blank templates, right? So it explains strengths are the things that you're good at, interests are the things that you like or enjoy, preferences are the things if given a choice you prefer to do, um, have, or learn, and then the needs are the things that you need to be successful. Um, so you most likely will have to um, break that up, but just to kind of put it on one. And here's a resource that might be helpful for you that you can go ahead and take a look at. And then here's the one on culture, language, and disabilities. Uh, you can change that any way you want. This is just the very general, like, this is what I want to do after high school for employment or career, education, independent living. There's a slide later on where you actually break it down into um, short-term and long-term goals. So just so you know, but this one's just to kind of get it out of the way, a nice easy one. Uh, then the ADA. One of the things that uh, we've realized in transition is that uh, most special educators do not know much about ADA and how to become eligible for the services. So here is, first of all, the ADA. Um, here's the website and you might be eligible for services after graduation and you can find out um, and you can access them by going to the website, going to your job, going to the school's disability office, and then you have to tell them about your disability immediately. This can be a really hard thing for students with disabilities because um, they don't like to self-report. And so that's something that we need to always think about when we're working with our students is just like helping them understand more about what it means to um, to uh, report your disability, um, that they need proof. So they need an IEP and or a doctor's note. They might, they most likely will need their triannual testing, their psych ed report uh, that will help, that helped determine their special education um, label. Uh, and they need to be within like the last three to five years usually in the post-secondary world. So, you know, having your student not assessed 
from 15 on um, is usually not best practice if we want to get them services after they graduate. And then they need to work with the school or the job on what will help them. And so I put some possible ADA type services here. You can go through those and talk to them about with the student about those if that's helpful. They're down there. Um, and then I want, want, or I would like to see them write about their academic abilities. Um, so, you know, what are they working on in reading, writing, math? Um, you know, and B, you can use the, oh, this should say Woodcock Johnson 4, not 3. Um, they can use the, um, the formal assessments like the Woodcock Johnson present level assess, um, uh, results or they can use more qualitative like you know I'm working on capitalizing the first letter of the sentence or increasing my vocabulary to high school level words or whatever it is or um, I can um, add subtract multiply and divide and I look I'm working on um, uh, word problems in algebra or something to that effect. So just really kind of putting both of those pieces in there. Um, my emotional reality. So one of the things that they look at in transition is the fact that um, having, helping students understand A, what the stressors are in life, and then B, how they will address those is um, actually a contributing factor to success. So I have two questions here. How well, you know, name some, or three, name some possible stressors in your life or future. They don't have any. How well do you deal with stress, uh, with traumatic experiences? Uh, most of us have lost a loved one at some point, so that's oftentimes an easy way to kind of get into that conversation. And then what can you do to make sure that you're able to meet responsibilities, even though a tough situation might arise? Uh, another factor in success is actually resiliency. So I often talk to, to my students about, and I use the word in class, like, wow, you guys are so resilient. I, I got to tell you, I'm so impressed to be working with you. And so they got that vocabulary into their their brains and into their hearts. So when we brought up this slide, you know, there was some um, way that we could, you know, um, kind of get them anchored into this idea. And then I give some other um, attributes of um, success that are there as well. So you can talk about each one of those. Then the helpful accommodations and modifications. So um, one, having you, you can check the IEP. You can talk to them about what works. Um, you can look into assistive technology. Um, and, you know, but this is really... Um, a useful thing. So I actually had my students do a self advocacy advocacy sheet and accommodations and modifications sheet. So this is what my disability is. is. These are the things that can help me. And then I would have them give those to teachers throughout the year whenever they had a new teacher. The next one is around self-efficacy. I know I'll be successful because I ask for a few sentences. Oftentimes I get one word. Um, and that's okay. This is the overcoming adversity piece that I was talking to a bit ago. And you can see um, you've got disability, racism, sexism, and economic issues. Uh, one of the things that I sometimes did with my students is I had them Google these different topics and um, learn about them before we ever filled out this slide because a lot of them were like, oh no, you know, I'm never going to deal with sexism or I'm never going to deal with economic issues. I'll always have a job, you know. So uh, I told them about the times I've been unemployed or, um, you know, fell ill or that type of thing and, and um, how I dealt with that. Um, staying connected. Um, so there is evidence that stay, having a support system um, when life gets tough, it actually can help you be more successful after high school. So um, I try to encourage these types of conversations and have them uh, figure out a plan for staying better connected with, um, with the people in their personal lives, not just school life. And then here's the long-term and short-term goals. So. I usually have them write one long term and then two short term around employment, around education, and independent living. So you can see that's the secondary. I'll show you the elementary. Whoops, that's not it. I'll show you the elementary next. And same idea. What all I did here was change some of the 
um, prompts to, to have like a easier or more simplified um, language. Now you can have it like this, so you can change it. Like I said, I just want to know how you're changing it. So like in reading, what am I good at doing? What do I need help with? Um, I can do it. So this one's around self-awareness and resiliency. Uh, this one's around accommodations and I know I'll be successful, important people in my life rather than support system or whatever. And um, then you can see for the goals, when I grow up, I want to work as a I will. So you can see that these are um, uh, uh, sentence starters that I did for this group. Uh, when I grow up, I want to learn how to blank. I will go to college at, you can change that to, um, I want to, as an adult, I want to learn more about or whatever it is. Um, or you can take it off. Uh, just make sure you write that down if you take it off. And then here's some independent living goals. So I want to learn how to cook blank all by myself. I can clean blank all by myself. I help my family buy. And then the last one is the functional. And here we go. You can see, let me put this bigger. Um, you can see that it's, once again, we've got the same types of prompts, but we might change the language. And also um, on the resources, this one is a lot bigger oftentimes for kids on the functional level where um, their family is actually a, a bigger resource. They get them to doctor's appointments. The, you know, they have um, oftentimes have a lot more intense schedules with um, expectations. Um, I give a prompt for the community um, and then also uh, fill in the blank for some of these and taking care of themselves because hygiene and self-care um, is always a, um, a goal when it comes to uh, functional disabilities. I get along well with others and I give some examples of things, uh, common things, social skills that um, kids who are working on functional um, uh, plans, they're, they're usually working on these pieces and then things people can do to help me I'll be successful, important people in my life, and then a few more, um, I want to reach my goals. But I just put these all onto one. Um, and talking about like the type of living situation and um, also, you know, what they can do to help out the family. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, I also have some examples here of um, each one of the types. So you can see uh, how somebody has filled us out um this was in 2017 with their student please keep pseudonames on these don't put their real name and but i'm gonna make sure to have these all up there so you can see this one's a lot more wordy less pictures but it's okay it's whatever the student creates so um it, we're here to help them all right let me know if you have any questions and um, i look forward to seeing what you do with this. Um, for this week, for this module section, you're going to, um, from what you have learned in the module, which slides do you think that you'll change, alter, or delete? What's your rationale for this decision? Hint, you'll be writing another reflection on the changes when we turn the CRSTP in on 319, and you'll earn three out of 10 points for answering this prompt. Please let me know if you have any questions.